the life of Mary Shelley in five minutes. Mary Shelley is more than just the author of Frankenstein. Her parents were famous philosophical authors. Mary Wollstonecraft, her mother, died a few days after Mary Shelley was born in London, England on August 30th, 1797. She continued to have tremendous influence on Mary through her radical ideas. Her Vindication of the Rights of Woman, published in 1792, was a feminist treatise before the term feminism even existed. She was often vilified for her radical positions and her support of the French Revolution. Mary's father was no slouch either. He was William Godwin, a radical political philosopher who was basically an anarchist who believed that government and cultural institutions like marriage, they were inherently corrupt. People were inherently good, but they were corrupted by living in a corrupt society. William Godwin and Mary Wollstonecraft married just before Mary Shelley was born. Unfortunately, Mary Wollstonecraft contracted puerperal disease while giving birth to Mary Shelley, and she died 10 days later. Her father, William Godwin, tried to raise his daughter according to the educational principles his wife had laid out. Mary Shelley only went to school for a part of one year, but she was educated by her father's library and by those around her. All the famous writers of the day, Charles Lamb, William Hazlitt, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, William Wordsworth, they all visited William Godwin. He was a famous philosopher and people flocked to him. One of the people who sought out William Godwin was Percy Shelley, the author of two Gothic romances and believer in radical revolution. Percy Shelley was from an aristocratic family and he helped support William Godwin, who was struggling financially. Even though he was already married, he fell in love with the young Mary. Mary's father forbade them to see one another, but they ran off to France anyway. Mary Shelley had her first daughter in 1815, but the baby died. Their son William was born in 1816, around the same time they moved to Lake Geneva. Percy's wife Harriet killed herself, and a month later, in December 1816, Mary and Percy Shelley finally married. Mary Shelley published her first book of travel writing in 1817. At the same time, when she was just 19, she was writing Frankenstein. According to Mary, they were all hanging out in Switzerland, reading ghost stories in the evenings, and Lord Byron, the famous romantic poet, said that they should each write their own supernatural tale. Mary then dreamt of, quote, a pale student of unhallowed arts kneeling beside the thing he had put together. I saw the hideous phantasm of a man stretched out, and then, on the workings of some powerful engine, show signs of life. And thus began Frankenstein, which was published in 1818 when Mary Shelley was 20. Forget what you've heard about Mary Shelley's great novel. First, Frankenstein is the doctor that creates the creature. Frankenstein is not the name of the creature. Call it Frankenstein's creature or Frankenstein's monster or simply the creature or monster. But do not call it Frankenstein. That's a rookie mistake and it shows you didn't read the book. Second, the creature is not some lumbering idiot. He's actually super smart. He just has to learn everything from scratch. And that's the thing about Mary Shelley's novel. It's a philosophical work that is not easy to read, and it's sometimes more difficult to understand. I can't break it all down at what time we have here, but suffice it to say that it's a big book and a little package. I just want to mention a few things. First, the creature is a blank slate. He doesn't know anything. The first thing he learns is that his creator rejects him. The creature is inherently good, but Dr. Frankenstein rejects him. So all he knows at this point is the hate of his own creator. And that's enough to drive anyone mad. And everyone else keeps rejecting him too because he's so ugly. The only treatment he ever gets is hatred. And the hatred of everyone around him means that he is totally isolated. And that's partly the point. When all one knows is evil, they learn evil. It, isn't, it is society that makes the creature evil. He isn't born that way. The creature knows that it needs companionship. It knows that it is isolation that has driven it to be so consumed by rage and by this desire to destroy his own creator. So he goes to Frankenstein, relates his tale, and insists that Frankenstein make a wife for him. He initially agrees, but then he becomes convinced that the new creature would probably be evil too. The creature is furious and says that he will, quote, be with him on his wedding night. And sure enough, well, the creature kills Frankenstein's new wife. Don't forget the frame story about Captain Walton, though. 
The point of the frame story is that Captain Walton should not let his singular ambition or singular desire to find the North Pole destroy him in the same way that Victor Frankenstein let himself be destroyed by his quest to create life. After the publication of Frankenstein, Mary's son William died in 1819. Later that year, she had another child, Percy Florence, her only child to survive. Then, in July 1822, her husband Percy was lost at sea while sailing. She was overcome with grief, and she never married again, even though she was only 24. Mary went on to publish a few more novels, books of travel writing, an edition of her husband's poems, and a bunch of biographies of famous people. In 1826, her second most famous work, The Last Man, was published. It's about an epidemic that wipes out mankind, a precursor to our zombie apocalypse stories. And then Mary Shelley died in 1851 at age 53 in London. Her novel Frankenstein, however, it endures. It's a work of horror gothic, but it's sometimes called the first science fiction novel because of its heavy reliance on science. And that's the life of Mary Shelley in five minutes. <laughs> 